Well, Graham, uh, I looked at the form table. The last six games, you're top. Well, it's about the only table we're top <laughs> off, to be honest. Yeah, the lads are flying. The lads are flying. They're uh, they're doing well. A little, little bit of confidence, momentum. Hopefully, we can. Uh, but it's all about winning the next one. So um, the next one tomorrow away at Walsall, and the lads will want to win that as well. So it's been good, um, and hopefully we can we can carry it on. And we've also got a pretty formidable home record, haven't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, very strong team. Um, lots of changes. There'll be a much changed team from the time we've played them. It was a game that uh, lives in the memory here as well, 3-all, uh, where we went ahead three times and we didn't see the game through. Uh, it was a couple of points that I believe were dropped, were let slip. So, uh, But like the lads keep saying to me, don't be looking back, look forward. So I have no choice but to look forward rather than look back. You think you're a better team now? Um, we're more healthy. We've got um, a better selection, more headaches. Uh, we've got a stronger bench. I think we've learned lessons. Better team, I don't know, because I thought we played really, really well um, in that game. We just gave three daft goals away. So a better team is debatable, but we're certainly in a better place mentally. And we're certainly in a better place with selection, injury-wise, and um, we're in a stronger place at this moment in time. But better team, I don't know, debatable. You probably won't mention it, but fans are looking at the table and are obviously say, saying you've got a chance of playoffs. Well, I won't mention it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we want to win our next game. Um, Air Force priority, and our priority was when we gathered at the start of the season in July, our priority was to beat 57 points. That's where we finished last year, or that's what we finished with last year. We want to beat that. We finished, it was a 15th in the division. We want to beat that. We want to beat 57 points. First and foremost, and every football club will have the same thought process in, in no matter what league you're in. First and foremost, particularly us, ourselves, the way the season has, uh, has started for us or the way things have panned out for us, the circumstances surrounding things. The first and foremost, we need to make sure we get the 48, 50 points. So we, mean, we need to make sure we have enough points on the board to be looking ahead and not looking over our shoulder. At this moment in time, there is a gap. Yes, a very, very healthy gap. But at this moment in time, we still have a job to do on that front. When that job is done, we'll change the targets, we'll change the goalposts, and we will move on and we'll try and achieve 57 points. And they're the only targets the area lads will have at this moment in time. And that's the problem in football, when you get one or two victories or you do well or one or two, people start looking beyond, people start jumping, and people start moving the goalposts too quickly. We've got to take our time, crawl, walk and then run. But yeah, look, the lads are in good form, the lads are flying. And uh, it's, it's, it's a really good feeling in the camp. So the initial target is 50 points, effectively? Yeah, you're probably looking at 50 points. That's our initial target. And then we can chase down 57. And then at and after that, I think, if we can get beyond 57 points, at and after that will be a remarkable season. Mm. Because fans are allowed to dream and speculate, aren't they? I imagine your players are not. No, we, we will just think of the next game because we all know football, we've all been in football long enough, you know what happens as well, Jesus, you, you, you win a couple of games, all of a sudden expectation levels change and the, 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 the whole landscape changes, but then all of a sudden then you, you've one or two, you know, just one or two decisions, you know, referees and things like that are, are quick enough to slap us back down, you know, so we'll, um, we, we'll just take it game by game. Um, tomorrow's a, a really important and be a really tough game. But as you say, they've got a really tough, uh, a really good home record. We'll just we we we're moving along sl slowly. We're moving along nicely. Um, we're developing. We're growing. We're building. And um, let's let's see how things pan out. Let's see how things pan out because you know yourself when 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 if you people are talking about all sorts and if you don't achieve them, then it's then it's uh, off with your head and size nines up the backside and there's the exits and. Off you go, and I, we know how football works. So listen, we won't, we won't be getting ahead of ourselves. Mm. Um, you say healthy. Have you got a healthy fit squad? Um, any uh, absentees or doubts? Yeah, we'll have. Um, obviously, we'll have Josh Shebury, We'll have Declan. We'll have Omar, who are unavailable. We'll have one or two in the physio room. Uh, be assessed this morning, but nothing major. Um, nothing untoward. Uh, the three lads won't be with us tomorrow, obviously. Um, they're still some way off, but I think 
on the whole, I think yeah, I think we're healthy. Mm. I don't think we'll, uh, we'll we'll have too many changes to the squad <coughs> from last week, um, and I, those three lads are still a little way off. We've never got a game in this week. We've got one arranged for next week, so um, fingers crossed. Uh, we, we we we're getting stronger as the weeks go on. And you talk about sort of your immediate targets. Is it difficult now to plan for next season? I'm thinking, speaking to Scott Bennett later, his contract is up at the end of this season. How far are you along the lines with with that sort of business? I'm well down the line with it. Well down the line with it. I've actually, funny enough, I was actually putting some pre-season stuff together yesterday. So, uh, and that's not me jumping, and that's not me putting uh, putting the. Uh, the cart before the horse. That's me trying to plan and organise. Um, and organise. And look, like I said, and I always do that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try and make progress with every in every department at the football club. Player was well down the line with with, with uh, where we want to go, what we want to do. Um, set down with one or two players already. There'll be another couple sitting down with over the next few weeks and so forth. It won't all be done in one day or one week, but. Um, listen, we're well well down the road. I think the lads have a fair idea um, as to what we want to do as well. Um, so yeah, look, I don't think there's any any uncertainty or grey areas in, in in that that side of uh, in that side of the club. So I'll ask you straight then: Is Scott one you want to keep? Scott will be one. I'll be sitting down with yeah for sure. Uh, and beyond his experience and his sort of uh, his commitment to the club, what else do you see in him to go forward? I, th I think he's invaluable. I think he's been brilliant for me since I walked through the front door. Um, I see leadership qualities, obviously, as, as you just mentioned. I see versatility in his game. He can he can uh, he can play at defence. He can play uh, in midfield as well. I just think he brings a calmness. Um, and like I say, he's uh, he's one of those players that every every dressing room should have proper leader. Any mumps, whinging or moaning or complaints in the changing room, he gets right on top of them and he nails them. As do the senior lads, in fairness, it's their changing room. They want a, a, a real good environment. They want to come into a real good changing room. It's theirs to run, theirs to organise. And I think Scott is one of the main uh, the main leaders in the changing room. He's quiet, but when he speaks, you listen. Mm. Um, he's, he's been brilliant. He's been brilliant for me since I come through the door. And um, he's, uh, as I say, that versatility is, is, is something that every club would need. Um, so Zanzar got a few minutes last week as well, didn't he? How difficult is it for him for almost a year out, isn't it? How difficult is it to reintroduce him to the oh, yeah, Jesus. football? Yeah, it's really that, that was a, a little taste of for him. Go on now, mm -hmm. get yourself uh, under the training ground, get yourself in the gym, go and walk off off the back of those few minutes. Um, and it was great to see him, great to see him. You could obviously see he was a little bit rusty, he was probably blowing heavy. Uh, and a, a few minutes he was probably blowing heavy. So, yeah, listen, all the uh, the injured lads, it's it's a tough manage when you're trying to integrate injured lads and you don't, I keep saying this, you don't have that games program um, for them to play in. So, we're having to play 11 by 11s with the U team, which is brilliant because we're integrating the U team and they're learning as well. And then obviously we've got a game organised next week that hopefully himself, Kyle Jameson and one or two others that can get some minutes in. So yeah, it was good to see him back, good to see him back, good to see Jamo back as well because uh, they were, they were long-term absentees. And it's horrible, it is horrible you, you, when you're injured and you, you, you just, it's mundane, it's, it's, it's numbing, it's not nice. And you see the lads out, out on the pitch, out on the training pitch, out on the pitch winning games and battling and running and doing their jobs and you just can't as an injured player. So. It's a horrible place to be when you're as, as a sub footballer when you're injured, and uh, most footballers will probably tell you it's probably one of the lowest points of their career, and um, it's probably one of the biggest frustrations of their career when they pick up injury. So nobody wants to be injured, and it's uh, Oz has had Oz has had it rough over the last uh, certainly since I've known him um, the, the, the last 18 months. He's had it really rough, so uh, hopefully he gets through it, and um, he can get some more match minutes between now and the end of the season. Yeah. It's bad enough when you're out for three or four months, I'd imagine, but for a whole year, it's... Uh, well, it was right. it was actually a second injury, wasn't it? Because he'd, he'd, he'd had an injury when we walked through the front door. Mm. Um, I, I think that was a hamstring injury he'd done it here at Southampton on a, a JPT uh, game. And then that kept him out for a couple of months. So straight away when a manager comes in, a new manager comes into the building, you want to hit the ground running and you want to show the manager uh, what you can do. And he didn't have that opportunity. He came back to us then in around the Christmas time. Um, and then we lost him. Uh, I think it was, we got a couple of goals at Crawley at home, and then we lost him for a game. I don't know whether it was New Year's Day. Um, we lost him then, and he's only making his way back now. 
which is uh, which is over a year, so it's it, it is tough, it really, really is tough. But he's got through it. And uh, in fairness to the dressing room, the group of players, both last year and this year, they, uh, they they've helped him immensely get through it. So uh, he's he's done brilliantly well to get through. And they were just a little reward for the 12 months of hard work he's put in in the physio room. Yeah, I think he's another one out of contract this summer. Is that right? Um, it's going to be difficult for him to show show you what he can do, isn't it, over the, over the next? Uh, well, that's that's his call. He has to he has to make uh, make sure he gets minutes, make sure he gets on the pitch, make sure we see him. That's his. Um, like like I say, the players, the ball is in the players' court. Um, if they're in the team, stay in the team. If you if you're not in the team, get in the team. So um, it's it's up to them to see where they want to be, what they want to do, and if they have that hunger, desire. They all know our DNA. They all know what we work towards. They all know how we work. So there's no surprises in the lads. Nobody will come to you and say, well, I don't know what I'm doing or I don't know what the manager wants. They all know. It's loud and clear. So, uh, yeah, listen, they'll, uh, they, they, they've all got a little bit of a battle and a little bit of a fight on their hands between now and the end of the season for whatever, whatever targets they set themselves, whether that be new contracts or whether that be 40, 50, 60 points, whatever. They, they will all have targets, personal, individual and collective. Particularly the strikers now, there's a lot of competition for places and then you're able to leave Kevin Ray out of the squad entirely last week. Um, they're, they're all they're all playing for well two positions, three max I suppose. It's it's it's, it's tough. No, not <laughs> tough. No, no, no. I, uh, I didn't see the problem I've had when I've come. I've not had an awful lot of competition. I've not had an awful lot of sleepless nights. I've not had an awful lot of of choice. Um, we were going along with three and four, and I was praying and I was hoping that the lads would get back fit and the lads. Get on the bench and make us stronger. Um, I, it's brilliant when when players are back when they're fit and we have choice. I look at so many teams that have come here or we've gone to their place and they make three, four changes and bang, they have massive impacts in the game. I go back to MK Dons here at home. My players were, were on their feet after playing the amount of games that they played, uh, and, and we went Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, and we kept we held in MK Dons here nil all. But the last 15 minutes. I needed to make two, three, four changes, and we just didn't have the numbers. We didn't have the personnel. So now I, I, I probably disagree with that. And the, um, I, I, I like choice. I like decisions, and I like a strong bench. And a strong squad is paramount to anything you want to do, anything you want to build. If you haven't got a strong squad, if you haven't got numbers, this football league, the the, the 46 games. Actually, Saturday will be 41, won't it? Um, Walsall will be our 40, 41st game of the season, which is phenomenal already. We're only in February. So this league, um, this schedule will catch you out. You need a strong squad. And uh, look, I wanted to get stronger. I, d I don't want to, I want more headaches. And that's the way, uh, that's the way we would like it as a squad. Because we're going to go Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday next week again. So uh, everybody will be needed. And Omar, not too far off now? Um, Omar is probably about four to six weeks off. Um, now Omar is a quick healer. He could be back in four, or the time scale could be um, played out to six. So somewhere in the middle would be would be a success. But if he come back um, on on four weeks, yeah, that would be brilliant. If it was five, that would be a success. But the the, the medics are actually saying uh, it, it might take its course six weeks. So again, you know him, Declan, Josh Shebri, If we can get them back as well, and um, that'll make us stronger, and um, that'll give us 21, 22 players, which we've set out at the start of the season. So um, yeah, that'll be that'll be really nice. That'll be a really nice headache. So um, and they are working hard. In fairness to them, and I know and I understand as a as a manager, ex player. I know it's horrible when you're injured and you just want to be out, you just want to be part of it. And the hard part of it is when you're injured is trying to keep yourself motivated, trying to keep yourself going. So uh, we try and integrate them, we try to get them involved in warm-ups and bits and pieces and, and team analysis. and we just, we just try and keep them involved and keep them around about so uh, you, you, don't actually, you don't actually drift and, and, and lose connection with the, with, with the group of players.